For this learning outcome of module four, we will be talking about cartilages. As we have learned earlier, there are three different types of cartilages. We have the hyaline cartilage, the fibrocartilage, and the elastic cartilage. And you can also see them over here on these images, how they differ from each other. Although each type of cartilage provides support, the one that is associated with bone is the hyaline cartilage. It is important to understand hyaline cartilage structure because most bones in the body, they do start out as a hyaline cartilage model. In addition to this, the growth in bone length and also in bone repair often involves making hyaline cartilage first and then replacing it for bone. So let's see on the next slides the hyaline cartilage in more details. Here we have some images of hyaline cartilage. Specifically, hyaline cartilage chondroblasts will secrete a matrix which will surround the chondroblasts. Once the matrix has surrounded the chondroblasts, it has differentiated into chondrocyte, which are rounded cells that will occupy a space called the lacuna within the matrix. So what we see over here on this image are those spaces, which are the lacuna, and inside we have the chondrocytes. Now the matrix will contain collagen, which will provide the strength, and it also contains proteoglycans, which make the cartilage be resilient by trapping water. Most cartilage is going to be covered by this protective layer of connected tissue that is called a perichondrium. Per peri means on the periphery and chondro means cartilage. So it's the connective tissue that's going to be around the cartilage. And this perichondrium, it will be made up of two layers with scattered fibroblasts in them, in addition to blood vessels and nerves. These blood vessels, they do not enter the cartilage matrix. Therefore, the chondrocytes, they will get their nutrients through diffusion from these blood vessels that are present in the perichondrium, just like we saw on the epithelium, where the cells would get their nutrients from the dermis, so through diffusion. The same thing occurs here in the cartilage because the blood vessels, they do not enter inside of the cartilage matrix. Now the articular cartilage is going to be a type of hyaline cartilage that will cover the ends of the bones or the epiphysis of the bones where they will come together to form a joint as we can see over here on this image where a joint is going to be defined as the area where two or more bones meet. And we can see here we have the femur meeting with the tibia. This articular cartilage it will have no perichondrium, therefore it will have no blood vessels or nerves. And we will talk more about this when we get to the joints later on in this course. Cartilage growth occurs in two different types of formats. We have what we call the appositional growth, and then we have what we call the interstitial growth. Appositional means that you're placing things in proximity. Therefore, a positional growth means that the chondroblasts present in the perichondrium, they are the ones that will add new cartilage. Now, interstitial means that it's a fluid that's found in the spaces around the cells. Therefore, interstitial growth means that you're going to have addition of the matrix by the chondrocytes in the center of the tissue. Therefore, it's a growth within the cartilage. And the appositional growth is a growth from the outside adding on to the inside. 